ดูดูแลที่นั่นอยู่ยี่สิบสปีครับคือเราดูของเองเลยมันห่างไปอ่ะเดี๋ยวกันตัวรุ่นนี่มาดูแลทำงานเดี๋ยวที่พิสุวรรณจันทร์นะครับรุ่นหลวงพ่อที่มาดีนี่เสือนท้ายเป็นรุ่นบังคับเทคนิคบังคับเทคนิคบังคับเทคนิครุ่นบังคับเทคนิครุ่นนี้เป็นตู้อยู่นั่นตู้อยู่ตอนพุ่มแล้วบุตรได้แล้วบุตรได้ไหมพุ่มกระใสได้ชัดเลยบังคับเทคนิคบังคับเทคนิคบังคับเทคนิคบังคับเทคนิคบังคับเทคนิคบังคับเทคนิคบังคับเทคนิคบังคับเทคนิคบังคับเทคนิคบังคับเทคนิคบังคับเทคนิคบังคับเทคนิคบังคับเทคนิคบังคับเทคนิคบังคับเทคนิคบังคับเสียงแต่ตอนนี้ก็ทำเป็นปฏิโตเดี๋ยวก็ทำให้มีห้องเลยตายตายตายมาดูวันนี้เลยตายตันชัดดีเลยตายแล้วทีนี้เออทีนี้ที่คนตายเยอะนะนี่วันนี้พวกเบสมาพวกมึงคนตายมาก็มีงานเยอะเออแต่ว่าก็มีงานทำบุญวันนี้แต่ว่าทางซิปมันบุญมีไหมทางซิปมันมีใช่ไหมทีนี้มีอะไรที่มาช่วยมาช่วยจะว่างว่างเลยคุณนั่งคุณนั่งคุณนั่งคุณนั่งคุณนั่งคุณนั่งคุณนั่งคุณนั่งคุณนั่งคุณนั่งคุณนั่งคุณนั่งคุณนั่งคุณนั่งคุ
Do you know? Can you introduce? These, uh, here you have all together nine statue, and on the other end, this side you have the nine statue. So all together there are eighteen. Okay. In Chinese Buddhism, okay, they are known as eighteen arahanta. Okay. And these eighteen arahants have their own qualities and power. So historically, uh, this. 18 arahants play important role, roles in the history of Buddhism. We don't have such a uh, story in Theravada, but some of the some of the figures of 18 arahants of Chinese Buddhism are similar to Theravada Buddhism. And their representation or their structure, their way of representation is very interesting. Sometimes they appear very dramatically uh, like uh, they have monkey fig figure or, or some peculiar figure. Indeed, those peculiar figure represent the klesha, even though somebody became arahan, but because of their previous uh, sanskara, the act based on those sankhara. So that was the idea. But here all those are statue, eighteen of them, quite nice, not in that way. And those uh, eighteen statue that are represented with peculiar appearances are not accepted by not accepted be not so acceptable for Theravadins because they are arahant at the same time they are represented very peculiarly. It can't be. This is the idea. However, if we say we are practicing Buddha's teaching, we have to tolerate, accept and we don't react. And in that, contrary to that, uh, these statues I'm sorry actually I exactly don't know, I didn't read any description, but because there are 9, 18, 19 plus 9, I say 9 plus 9, then because of the figure I'm just, because of this particular number I'm guessing these are the same arahants that I have heard. They are Bodhisattva or Arahant? I think they are Arahant. So that means the Chinese Buddhism also they believe in Arahantasi? No, Chinese Buddhism is a part of, they have the Theravada uh, early Buddhism, no? so they have three yana. One is Savaka yana, Arahanta yana, and then Bhiksattava yana. Oh, that's so, right. They never say they don't believe. Or, it is not a matter of believe or not believe. It's a, it's a true story as far as Buddha's teaching concerns. They are a, there are some beings who would like to accomplish the Arahanthood in this very life. Some would become Savaka, the direct disciples of the Buddha. And some other would like to extend their life to have the other sentient being and becoming the full fleshed Buddha, the Samak Samya, Samak Samyutta. Samak Samya Sambuddha. Fully enlightened. This idea is everywhere.
So viewers, you can see that the dragon. Every Chinese temple we visit, we can see the symbol of Chinese Buddhism. And also we can see the dragon. And, and most importantly, they represent their, their own culture and tradition. And we can see that the yin and yang, we all know that the, the Chinese philosopher uh, Lao Tzu, who has first introduced the Taoism, that uh, yin and yang, and we can find here, You can see that there is a representation of the, the representation of the Theravada Buddhism. So in the Chinese temple, even we can find the Theravada Buddha statue. They really respect the Theravada Buddhism well.
could you kindly introduce about this? What is the history of this? Only thing I can say what I'm seeing. I see it's a beautiful building. It looks like a pagoda. I have never come across like this before. I can see top part is like a pagoda. And down part there is some like a treasure. Isn't it? They look like some treasure. So people pay here perhaps to get some. To get some luck. So we go off. Okay, there is a big building. Let's go and see what it is. Yin and Yang, the symbol of Yin and Yang. Yeah, they just paint the sun, the dragon statue, and the Bodhisattva statue. So we can see that moral painting on the on the building wall. It has been decorated so nicely. In Thailand, generally, wherever we visit, if we visit the Chinese temple, then we can have the experience of the Chinese culture. Their tradition, the Chinese people, wherever they go, they have felt their own culture and tradition, particularly Chinese Buddhists. Who is he? Sakyamuni Buddha. He's a Sakyamuni Buddha. so beautiful they have just painted they give new paint so the looks very nice wonderful color and of course the Chinese dragon I be here okay the building construction is just going on you can see the dragon they give new paint it looks very new today we are lucky to have the opportunity to visit here Few moment, few moments, few moments ago, we have visited the one pagoda, Chinese pagoda, as my friend introduced it as a treasure. Now we are going to visit another treasure, which is gold treasure. Earlier we visited the silver treasure, but this pagoda holds a gold treasure. You can see the down part. There's gold treasure. And they have give just new painting. It looks very nice. On 
unfortunately we cannot read Thai or Chinese. It seems that this represented the luck. If people come and pay respect, they will have luck. Yeah, we can also see the back, money back, the coin pass. We call the pass. There are two pass, two side, and we have the gold tracer. So now we are going to visit another parts of this temple and that part is I think there are many things to see and introduce ourselves with new places. I think this is the monkey king as we can see in the Chinese movie. Monkey king. Ox. So, this is very nice. We can see there's some some devotee that came here to pay respect. We don't know his name, but he looks very happy.
Now we are going to see another parts of the temple. The pass is very important, very nice. Today I'm very happy. I have accompanied with my friend, Venerable Satyajit and Venerable Churachai. Venerable Churachai is supposed to with us, but he is now in conversation with some of his followers at this temple. But it is okay. We are just two friends from Bangladesh, Venerable Satyajit and me. Enjoying the charming view of this temple. You can see the gate, and in front of the gate, that in generally the four by four o'clock, they close the gate. And we have another pagoda. Maybe they have something important inside. Yeah, there's a phone, and in the phone there is water. We can see the a small Buddha statue, the a structure, architecture. It looks like Chinese architecture they have presented here. Yes, Venerable, it is Chinese structure. Okay, if you want to say something, maybe. Okay, could you say something? Yeah, it's a beautiful pagoda. Underneath the pagoda, it look like a dance statue. I'm not sure who is this a statue of. Anyway, it must be a respectable person. So we can consider it's a part of Triple Gem. So he is laughing Buddha since. Could be. Yeah. He's a laughing. The structure look like a laughing. And here they have presented Rajin Chinese structure, Chinese architecture, Chinese architecture. I don't know, but to me, it look more more of look like natural things. Yes, the natural things. Like a mountain or some cave or whatever, yes. then fountain. Yeah. It's good, very cooling. Yeah, it looks very nice, natural cooling. Yeah. It's natural cooling. And preserve the nature. It's so beautiful. So you must come and be with this nature itself. Yes. So now we are going to see another part of the temple. This is also the one place as we are supposed to enter. Uh, here they put the, some Arahanta, uh, famous monk in Thailand. So now we are going to enter. No, here they have presented Buddha Stasu. And the Buddha Stasu looks very calm, very composed. Different name with different color, chibara, different color of the clothes, different position. And now we can see that this is a representation of the Christianity. That means at this temple, 
they are not just preserving the Chinese culture and tradition. Actually, they are preserving the Buddhist culture and culture of the other religions like Christianity. We can see that this is Jesus, also Christian followers, they will know the meanings of the, the physical posture. She must be Mary. And we can see that the Christianity are represented here. Now let's see that the famous Buddhist monk is one of the most famous Buddhist monks in Thailand. The Thai people respect Buddhism and especially the Theravada Buddhism. They respect the monks who practice meditation. The monks, their creation arts looks very real, I think, very nice. They have all attained high level of jhana. Maybe most of the monks they have an arahantsiva nibbana. So they have physical posture, they are composed. Their physical structure that they have meditate so many years, dedicate their time in practicing and cultivating their mind to get, get rid of suffering, to destroy all their classes. So, They have very, very professionally. We have visited last time here, but uh, unfortunately we did not have much time to see all the ground here. So therefore, this time we have new opportunity to visit this place. And this place is very, I think, suitable for meditation, for cultivation of our mind. Well, we have now another place to see, visit here the monks, all the senior monks, respected monks, Buddhist monks here. Uh, they have been, they are famous monks in Thailand. 
who has dedicated their who have dedicated their lives to propagate Thai Buddhism is not only Thai society but also around the world. They are painted with gold color. So here, the, we call the ascetic. The ascetic. Now the another important thing I would like to be, introduce you. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have seen that Buddha is Tessu, also the Christian is Tessu about the Jesus. Then most importantly now we can see the Mecca. So wonderful. So we can see that Buddhism respects all religion. Uh, we must understand this thing. Mutual respect. So, generally Buddhists, they claim that Buddhism is most peaceful religion and many people, they don't believe it. But uh, when we see that such example that in the temple, when you see they have decorated the picture of the Mecca, then it necessarily shows that Buddhism respect other religions, other culture as well. Buddhism believe that only through understanding other culture, through understanding other religion, respecting other religion, is the way to establish peace, religious peace on earth. And Buddhist Emperor Asuka also he clearly has mentioned that one must not just glorify his own religion and own culture. One must learn and respect to glorify his own other culture as well. At the same time, one must not disrespect other culture because by refraining oneself by from disrespecting other religion is a way that one can establish peace and harmony. Yeah, now it's another important as see two things here. Here they, they also represented about the Hinduism. So this is the symbol of Hinduism. It's a Krishna. So by visiting this place, this is not just for the recreation, but when we visit such place, such a place, so we can understand that what they are really representing themselves. So here, the another important thing is the Hinduism representation of the Hinduism. The Sivalinga is one of the most important and respected place for Hinduism. Because they decorated so nicely. So those are the aesthetics. So the viewers, as we can show we we, we see that uh, initially we We have seen Buddhism, we have seen Christianity, we have seen Muslim, 
now we are seeing the Hinduism, there is a Shiva. You see that they have they make a place for the Shiva himself, just to preserve the Indian culture. I just would like to say that why Buddhism is peaceful religion. So the reason is Buddhism is peaceful religion because Buddhism gives values to every religion equally. It does not just respect his own religion, it also respect other religion as well. Of course, this, this is a Chinese temple, and we know that the Chinese are the Buddhist, but they have their own cultural religion. They follow their own culture, tradition. But uh, when we see that, the important parts. Every culture, every religion, they have one goal. And that goal is to achieve peace, to establish peace and happiness. Now, it's important. There's, there's a representative of the cock, hand, is a symbol of respecting the king, his majesty, Nareshwan, uh, here. They decorated so nicely. Now you can see here, this is a representation of the Indian culture, Indian religion, Ganesha. Now in Thailand also the respect actually, these deities. Even if we visit temples, there are, even they establish the statue of the Ganesha.
Now we are going to visit one of the 